Good morning, everyone. It's Phil here with you, talking about a subject uh, that happened um, a little over a week ago, and uh, I'm referencing the Boston Marathon bombing, and just a little bit of something that I need to go back to and revisit uh, since it's uh, politically not going to go away, and that's uh, immigration reform. Now, when people speak of immigration reform, they usually go to the illegal immigrants that are crossing borders. But uh, that's not going to be the focus today. The focus today is going to be on legal immigration and why I think that should be scrutinized and stopped. Um, if we go back to 9-11 and that tragic day, upon more investigation we found that uh, the people that were responsible didn't necessarily come across the pond, if you will, to do this. They were already here in the country and had been here for many, many years. As I alluded to earlier on in a video that I did, it doesn't take two weeks to learn how to fly heavy jets like 767s, 757s. That takes a long time, which would denote that these people had been here for some time. Again, funny thing about history, always has a nasty way of repeating itself. You look at these two characters that were responsible for last week's tragedy. Again, they had been here for 10 years, according to news reports. They were legalized citizens. They had become citizens after a while. And as anyone who has been through this process knows, it takes a good long time to do that. So, again, people have come across the borders, have been here for a long time, obviously with an agenda, called into action by whomever, Jihad, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, whoever, to go into action, and boom, boom, in this case, two bombs go off, countless people injured, four so dead. It seems that we've learned not a damn thing from 9-11. We're still, as a country, supposedly a country who is uh, engrossed in homeland security and all sorts of uh, little security uh, the practices in place to keep us safe, but on the fundamental thing of who you let in your country, we're still like babes in the woods. Again, I say, who are these people you are you're letting into the country? What's their agenda? And why are we still post 9/11 doing this? The country's full enough as it is. We got enough people here. What are we, people banks? We're trying to put as many people in the account as we can so they can gain interest? This is crazy. Now, as I heard on a news report uh, last evening, it's even spilling over into Canada. Canada, which basically is never in the news for anything. And it's possible that they came from the United States into Canada with this same garbage, this same tragic activity of making bombs and blowing people out of the water or off the land if you will now there are some that you know are banging the drum they're bleeding hard saying well this country was built by immigrants we're a land of immigrants yeah yeah and white white is on rice and wheat is in bread the point of it is 130 years ago, 140 years ago, when folks were coming to Ellis Island and, and coming to the country, they were coming because they saw this country as a means to enrich their lives, make their lives better. They came over to this country with an agenda, but that was a good agenda because they came over with their sleeves rolled up and ready to work to help build a country and build a life for themselves. Unlike today's folks that are crossing the borders who either come over with their hand out saying, gimme, and sitting on their asses, or planning to blow our asses to smithereens. See, 140 years ago, 
120 years ago, 80 years ago, we didn't have the Jihad. We didn't have Al-Qaeda. We didn't have Hezbollah. We didn't have whoever else it is with these, these radical uh, religious views and these radical social views, um, not coupled with the fact that America has a problem keeping her nose in her own business and the politicians and political muckety-mucks go to other countries and, and preach uh, democracy and, and, and the American way of life to other people telling them, other nations, what to do when we don't even have our own backyard clean, pissing the people off. Okay, so you got all these factors in there, and then you let these people come over here, and they have agendas, not good ones, obviously. Again, when are these idiots in Washington, including the main idiot that's in the White House, going to wake up and stop being self-serving bastards and letting these people come over here to make sure that we get blown up? And then they sit there with their eyes to the sky, looking for a missile to come over from some other country, and they're right behind them making bombs putting them in backpacks and dropping them at various points and then calmly walking away and then 15 seconds later you see people flying all over the place and legs flying all over the place and blood everywhere. When are you going to wake up America? It just boggles the mind. Again, I say post 9-11 that we're still going through this garbage. Upon further investigation, it was noted that these two fellas, this wasn't the only uh, incident that they had planned. They had planned to bomb other places. And th this is just the tip of a very large iceberg. How many of these people are in the country? They had been here 10 years. So maybe they weren't the only two that came in and gained citizenship. See, th they've got a very smart game plan. They're, they're trained over there to come over here and assimilate, unlike the illegal ones that just come over and say the hell with everything, I'm going to do what I want to do and whatever. No, these, these are, these are you know, cool-headed ones. They come over and they learn how to play hockey, they learn how to play football, they learn how to go to our colleges and, and to be just like us until they get that email or that phone call that says, go into action and blow the bastards to kingdom come. And they're so cool, they're so sophisticated, that yeah, they could take a lie detector test and pass it. Because they honestly feel it's part of their philosophy, it's part of their, their, their core. And they are so firm in their belief that they could actually take that lie detector test and not sweat, not even flinch, and pass it. And that makes them dangerous. And what makes them more dangerous is they are not afraid to die. They look at dying as a, as a rite of passage, as, as the ultimate for their sadistic goal. So that makes them super dangerous. And yet, these self-serving people who want to get back into the presidency or get back into some office, you know, just pave the way for them to come in and blow our asses off. You might say, well, yeah, Phil's a little pissed off today. Yeah, I'm pissed off. Does it surprise me? No. Because, as Khrushchev said so many years ago, America is the greatest country on the planet, but sure is stupid. They cut him off, but he got that part in. Stupid in the fact that we see things. We have experienced things. We've experienced a multiple loss of life because of idiots in the political arena letting idiotic things happen. And we still haven't learned. And they're still talking about immigration. Screw that. They were talking about sequestration. I've never even heard of that before. This country is in trouble financially. I don't care about their little stupid reports about Wall Street and then the, the, the stocks going up. That's for the rich boys. That's for the folks that got plenty. I'm talking about real life America. The, right here in, in my neighborhood, in your neighborhood, in neighborhoods like ours all across this country, where people are still suffering, the food banks are going empty. 
People are still hunting jobs because there are no jobs really to hunt. People are still losing homes. Oh, but Mr. President and the muckety mucks in Washington, oh, I like the way the country's going. We're, we're doing good things. It's, it's progressing. No, it isn't. And it's not going to progress unless you guys get off your asses and start doing things the way they need to be done. And the first thing you need to do is get off this immigration crap. It doesn't work. What worked 120 years, 140 years, 160 years ago doesn't work today. When I was a kid, and I'm soon to be 55 years old, when I was a kid in Michigan, we left our doors unlocked. We weren't so consumed with security of our homes. You could go to the store, leave your door unlocked. You could go visit a neighbor, leave your door unlocked, and come back and find your house intact. But soon that changed. And as the old saying goes, either you evolve or you disintegrate. So we evolved with the times and put some double locks on the doors, put some deadbolts on the doors. I see after 9-11, security went up at the airports 50 million fold. So you can half-handedly do something like this, but you leave the door wide open for anybody to come into this country and wreak havoc on it. You better grow up, America. You better learn something, you muckety-mucks in Washington, because the next time we view daylight, it might be from the inside of a coffin, if they can find enough of us after we've been blown the hell and back to put in a coffin. Wake up. Your ideas stink. If you want people to, to, to become entrepreneurs, Mr. President, that seems to be your thing, that these wonderful people come in and they can study and they can open up businesses and... Be, you idiot. These people, these foreigners that come over here, your entrepreneurs, nine cases out of ten, if they open businesses, they will fill those positions with their own kind. Foreigners can be very clandestine, in case you haven't noticed that. I noticed it because I'm right here with them. There have been balls that have been built in my neck of the woods here. And it's been of a certain foreign ethnicity. And you go into that mall, you don't see any Americans in any of those jobs. You see their own kind. And if you do see one or two Americans, they're mopping floors or doing some kind of janitorial work. They do not give them positions of substance. I'm not saying all of them, but the vast majority. So your idea is bullcrap. If you want entrepreneurs to give people jobs, we've got plenty of American people right here in this country floating around without anything to do because of your, uh, your co-muckety-mucks screwing up before you did. Wake up and understand that everybody who crosses this damn border does not have our best interests at heart. So since it's hard to determine which ones that do, cut them off. Let them stay in their own countries. If they're so industrious and so wonderful and so helpful, let them help their own countrymen where they are. And let us do what we can for our country where we are. You're the president, and I'm speaking to you, person, you're the president of the United States. So why don't you start working to the betterment of the United States instead of giving hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars to help somebody else and we're over here hungry as hell just this side of a damn care package. Okay. I guess I better crawl down off the cross because somebody else needs the wood. But I mean, that just really got on my nerves to see just an American institution like our marathon, Boston Marathon, which I believe is the oldest in the country, and, and just to see that wonderful institution just, you know, going down the tubes in one day with people being blown from here to there, missing limbs, killing an eight-year-old kid. The poor little kid didn't even have a, have a chance to, to, to enter high school or, or go to the prom. He's never going to do it because of your stupidity, politicians. You muckety-mucks. You idiots. And now they, we've got to bury another American son. We've got to bury three more Americans, four more Americans. There are Americans going to have to learn how to uh, adjust to a whole new way of life because of your idiocy. My God. Somebody ought to call a cop. Anyway, if you've liked what I said and you've enjoyed this video, I thank you very much. 
to my supporters out there, my um, subscribers, I hope you enjoy this new edition uh, that I've just made. I know I've been sort of absent for a while, but just like everybody else, I've been trying to make it in this um, hard times in the land of plenty. Um, I promise I will be uh, coming uh, uh, at you again with another video real soon. Um, it's going to be about uh, another governmental thing and a legal thing. And that's how lawyers are just uh, uh, shafting some of the most precious of our society, and that's our disabled. So look forward to that one soon. Uh, as I said before, I may not always be right, but it's the way I feel about things, and I bring that to the forefront. So until we meet again, this is Phil saying, take care and stay safe. Bye-bye now.